Hi there, my name is Safwan, and today I'll be taking you through the Go Live checklist within Power Pages. Make sure to stay till the end because that's where I share some of the additional things that I think you should know when taking a website live. So, to go to that checklist, we can go to the setup page and go to this Go Live checklist over here. Now, this is a brand new portal that I have just spun up, so I haven't really done anything with the web pages or APIs or security or anything like that. Um, I'll just take you through the go live checklist and let's see what we have here. So the first one is the site checker. You can imagine the site checker to be something like the app checker or solution checker in model driven apps or power apps. And basically what this does is it runs through some very high level uh, functionality of the website. So things like performance, things like configuring web API permissions or web roles and web files and also looking at you know whether you have enabled an error page so to run this you can just click on this run site checker and this will show you all the things that it checked and you can see that straight off the bat it will make everything pass i haven't really done anything to the portal although everything passes in the site checker you still need to make sure that your website is functional and is actually doing what it's supposed to, so don't rely on this heavily. Uh, this is just to make sure that the out-of-the-box functionalities of the portal works. The next step is the uh, licenses. So with Power Pages, licenses um, is not based on a particular user, but it's based on a capacity of users. So you might have a license for 5,000 users monthly, or you might have a license for 10,000 users monthly, and you'll be billed based on the volume of users hitting your website and not just for five users. So normally you set this up in the billing policies and that's why I won't go into this much detail. The third one is convert your site from trial to production. So by default, whenever you create your portal, it always starts as a trial and then you need to convert it into a production. If you don't convert it into production within 30 days, it goes into this suspended state. Uh, you have seven days to convert it into a production website. Otherwise, your whole website will be deleted. So what I normally do is every time I create my website, I always just convert it into production because I'll need to do it anyway, so why not? So to convert it into production, just click on this and it will open up an admin page and you can click on convert to production and this will take you around Two, three minutes okay so the fourth step is cdn so cdn just allows your website to load a lot faster the way it does this is by saving your static files like your images css javascript svgs all of these files into different servers based on location so if a user from africa is looking at your site and maybe my site was built uh, within australia region then to load up the site to get the, all the images in the site, they don't need to go to Australia, they just need to go to any of the surrounding servers that um, my images were cached and this will just result in the page loading much quicker. So you can turn this on by going into the Power Pages admin side and then turning on the CDN. So just come here and click on this and then it will turn the CDN on. This will take around 5 minutes maybe. Okay, now that my CDN is enabled, I can go into enabling WAF. So WEF is Web Application Firewall. It protects your website from DDoS attacks, SQL injections, and cross-scripting, and things like that. Um, it does provide an additional layer of security over what Power Pages already provides. So highly recommend turning this on. However, this is in preview at the moment. Um, hopefully, this goes into GA very soon. Um, just a disclaimer about WEF, though, we don't have, as a administrator of Power Pages, uh, you don't have the ability to control your WAF settings. Um, this is something that Microsoft is probably working on in giving us the control. But one thing I've seen is that when I try to upload my documents using Web API and I had WAF enabled, I wasn't able to upload documents over 2.5 megs. And when I turned the WAF off, I was able to upload more than 2.5 megs, which is expected. Now, as it's in preview, there are some issues, so just be aware of it when going live with WAF. You can turn on WAF by going to the same PowerPages admin side and then clicking on this checkbox. 
All right, so the next step after web is uh, adding a custom domain to your site. If it's going to be a public site, then it's highly recommended that you use a custom domain, which is, uh, you know, to your brand and a bit user friendly than having, you know, power portals.com at the end. If you want to find out how to add custom domains, check out my another video. Uh, I'll have the link in the description, but I'll be skipping this step and going into the last one, which is setting the site to public. Now again, by default, when you create uh, your website for the first time, it's in trial condition and the state of the site is private. So no one, even if they have the link to your website, can actually go in unless they are signed into this um, environment that the website is on and they need to be given some sort of access, so maybe an admin access or a local user access. To prove this, we can go into preview and get the URL of the site and you can see that when I come to the site, I am able to load the page, but if I open the link up in an incognito mode, you'll see that it will take me to the Microsoft sign-in page, meaning I won't be able to look at the page unless I'm signed into the environment. Now you can change this by going into the site visibility settings within the designer and turning it into public. This will restart your site, so just give it a couple of minutes and your site should be publicly available. Okay, so now my site is publicly available. You can see it has changed the status from private to public. Let's sync the page and I can then go into incognito mode and you can see that I didn't need to log in to access the site. So these were all of the recommendations by Microsoft uh, when going live. I'll give you some additional things you can check as you're going live. First one is the PWA. So if your site is going to be used uh, primarily on mobile phones and you want it to you know, seem like an app, uh, make sure to turn this uh, PWA on. This will really give you that edge over just having a website for your users. Another important thing to look at is authentication. So if it's not a public website, uh, but it requires some sort of authentication uh, from the end users, Go into Identity Provider and make sure you have enabled the identity that you want your users to be logging in. This can be Active Directory, B2C, Google, or whatever. And if you don't want local sign-in, make sure to disable it. Most of the times, I disable this one and I use AD or B2C. The third tip is if it's going public, you probably want to track how your website is going, the number of users visiting your site, the locations, and so on. Um, so you can go and set uh, telemetry up and use Microsoft's Azure App Insights. If you want to do that, uh, you can go into Azure, create an App Insights, and you can follow these steps to add in your telemetry information into your Power Pages. And the way you can do this is by going into your portal management, scroll all the way down till you see Enable Traffic Analytics, click here, and then pick your website, and then add in your code snippet for telemetry. And the last tip is IP restriction. So you can actually um, enable what IP will be allowed to access your website. This will basically block every other IP addresses other than the ones you have listed here. So that was all for today. If you liked it, make sure to share and give a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or ask in the comment sections below. Catch you next time.